when the power of the Holy Spirit is here, my dear friends, for the sake of respect, we do all silent our phone. Those who got the phone here, please silent it or off it so you don't have to run here and there. And don't disturb when the speaker is here or the spirit is hovering. Amen. We give a respect. Give a hand clap to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I'd like to call Sister Priscilla and she's going to the opening prayer and after that she'll dedicate this mic to uh, our senior pastor, Sister Flori Tatanga. Hallelujah. And uh, Mr. Joe Bosse is here too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the Australian men. Hallelujah. And thank you. He's been taking, giving our session in teaching. Uh, he's building our ministry. Amen. Those who have came and attended, they really enjoy it. Amen. Myself too, I really enjoy it. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Sister Priscilla. Hallelujah. name. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear a great deal of fruit. For you can do nothing without me. Praise the Lord. Yes, we cannot do anything without our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he is here. His Holy presence is here. We lift our hands and welcome the precious most Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praises, mighty God. We lift your name on high. We exalt the beautiful, mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, without you, we are nothing, Lord. The land Oh, 
mightily take full and total control. Yes, Lord Jesus, the testimonies, the word of God, the songs that will be sung, Lord, everything is speaking to us through you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you so much, Lord. Father, bless us all together. Bind us all together with your agape love. Release your love, peace, and joy. And yes, Lord, we thank you for your holy presence. Thank you for promises in us that you will never leave us, nor forsake us, Father God. And that no weapons formed against us shall ever prosper in our lives. We serve a great God. We serve a miracle-working God. Our God is alive and not dead in Jesus' name. for your presence. We give it all back to you, Lord. Let no man be seen, but let you be seen, Father God. Let your name be lifted and your name be glorified. We give you back the glory, the honor, the praises to be yours forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful, mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I be blessed to be sitting in the presence of our Father. Amen. We are all blessed. Praise the Lord. And we just, just want to start off. This old lady, she said a word of God today that has kickstarted our, amen, our fellowship with God this evening. And just want to share with us today that in John 3, 30, the word of God says, He must become important, more important than we become less important. He must increase while we decrease. Amen. Let God alone be praised, be lifted in our midst. And can we all stand up? We are going to praise the Lord tonight and thank Him for bringing us together. You know, these uh, evenings on Fridays, we could be late because it's paid time to some of us. We could have, you know, done our shopping. But thank you so much for giving this time to our Father in Heaven. Amen. Yeah. It is a seed that is so it will never go unrewarded. It will be rewarded. So let's ask the worship team for praising chorus. If you want to jump, jump for the glory of God. If you want to run around for the glory of God. Amen.
we are not alone. When God is in the house, joy bubbles in our hearts. Amen. You are not going to be asked again to clap or to jump. No. The spirit in your, in your rejoices in between those things. Amen. In Jesus' name. Just turn to the person next to you. Move around. Let's sing one more song. Just move around in the house. We're in the family of God. We are children of God. Bless that person. Say hello to that person before we are going to sit down. Just move around. If you don't know that person, just explain yourself to him or her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's, uh, amen. Just sing and just worship God. Praise the Lord tonight. Move around, move around. Amen. There's no paralyzed Christian in the house tonight. All are well and alive. Amen. Thanking God tonight. 
I take this moment of uh, on behalf of us, our senior pastor here, Pastor Tish and uh, Pastor Raven and Pastor Joe, if I'm correct. And the rest of you, tell uh, your faith. Here in Laredo, we take this moment, uh, uh, Senior Pastor Makan, today on behalf of all of us that are here. We thank God for your life. We thank God for you know, urging you to come to Fiji in this season. Only God knows that we take this moment on, on behalf of Pastor Boss, who's here from Australia, and all of us children of God that are here from different families, different um, amen, uh, places in Suva, around Suva, around Nakasi. We're here because we come to want to come and know and hear the good news that you're bringing from abroad to all of us. I'm excited. Just before I came, I was sitting outside of our porch, just looking around, and then I said, Lord, you know what? I'm opening up my heart. I just want to hear what you want to tell me today. And I believe we've got some good message, something that will what? Either clean us up or scrub us, amen, or make us stronger. Amen, in Jesus' name. Thank you, my brother. You're most welcome in the family of faith tonight. You're most welcome. <laughs> We welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Tish, and um, the Ms. Surila. Surila, you're welcome, both of you and your family. We welcome you in the house tonight. We are blessed again to have you in the house. We believe that you had a good holiday in America, a man before you came. Thank you. We've seen it in you. Like the shirt is about uh, cannot fit you, eh? Amen. And thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for going. I know you're not just going there for sightseeing. I believe God has been using you a lot on the other side. Thank you. May God bless you. And your wife that is here, beautiful wife. And also your children here and abroad. It is our prayer as your family that God will bless every one of them. And Pastor Joe Bosse, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being here, helping out on whatever God has urged you to come and share with the family tonight. My brother, forgive me. I don't know your name, but you're most welcome. Amen. Welcome in the name of Jesus. We are not strangers here. We are all children of the Most High God. God bless you and your family. Whether they're here or abroad, may God bless them. Eh? And Sister Alice, a man from the Rosary oh, Pentecost, you're most welcome, my sister. Even though your husband is not here, but you're most welcome. Thank you for the arrangements. Thank you for everything. May God bless you. To the worship team, thank you for the beautiful worship and the song. We thank you for Pastor Joe. Thank you. You've got a lovely voice. Thank you. May God bless you all. May His anointing, you know, bless you. You can take your seat. Amen. We are going to go through. I won't take much of our time. To all of us that are here, maybe it's the first time, you're most welcome. You're not forgotten. You're most welcome to all of us. Yeah? And uh, I won't take much of our time. We'd like to hear the message from our pastor tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, introducing him is Pastor Maka. Eh? Amen. Um, you're coming to introduce yourself more fully to us as you are going to come. Eh? And thank you so much. So I give this time to you. We are all listening. We are all ears. Amen. All right. God bless you, my brother. Thank Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. Amen. I trust that uh, you're having a great evening thus far. Yes. Amen. Can you understand my English? Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. I just personally let me say, commend your music team. Praise the Lord. You have actually set the platform of bringing in the presence of God in a fresh and mighty way. Amen. I commend your musicians, your singers. It is a delight. I travel a number of countries. But to go in to hear coordinated symphony, listen accurately, a coordinated symphony playing is very hard to come by. A team that plays with the anointing of the Holy Spirit can only bring the divine presence of Almighty God. That is what you've got here. 
And I would like to endorse your music team as we go along. Amen. I do believe that you will go on to higher ground Hallelujah. in praise and worship for the Lord God Almighty. Now, uh, as I move on, I'm, my name is Naren Mekan. I'm a Gujarati. I was born in India and I migrated to New Zealand when I was six months of age. I was not a Christian when I went from India to New Zealand. In fact, I was the opposite. I was one that had no time for Christianity. And I say it very clearly, I had no time. My dad said to me, son, I can remember going to school when I was five, started school. And you know, I don't know whether you have in Fiji, but we had, used to have Bible in schools those days. And they used to teach us. And I, I just loved the Bible at that time. And anyway, the Bible school teacher came home one day and she was just telling us about Jesus. And in those days, some of you might know the flannel board. You know the flannel board where you cut the pictures and you put it on there and you told a story. It grasped my attention and I loved it. A dad came in off the fields and he said, Son, we are Hindu. And Hindu we stay. Well, it went into this silly little boy's head and it formed a concrete block. And that was it. From there on, anything to do with the Bible, Christianity, switch went off. So I didn't like it. Okay, that was how I started. I'm a, a fam family of uh, my mum and dad and three children, uh, three sisters and two brothers. And uh, I am the only one of the family that's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus found me. And he saved me. And he brought me thus far. Just want to say a little bit about my background because I am a farmer by trade. I grow onions, I grow potatoes, cauliflowers, lettuce, and that is how I support myself around the world. I've been going to India for 32 years every 12 months and training pastors and leaders in various parts of India. Many of you have been to India? Which boy? Ah, the singer. Well done. Are you must be from South? Madras? Tamil Nadu? Kerala. Great. Nice state, that beautiful state. Way back in 1982, that was the first state I preached the gospel in. 1982, beautiful state. Hallelujah. But I grow those things and, and I just want to share this because I believe there's some people here and in particular young men. Young men in the age of about 25 to 35. And uh, you're in this church here today, but I believe God is going to reinforce into your lives what it is for you to surrender your life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, whose name is Jesus. Amen. You're in here, and you are living, you are breathing, but you're not living the life of Jesus Christ. And I'm a little bit uh, tough on men, in the sense I want men to come under the true headship that Jesus has called men to be. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean, sisters, that I'm going to preach that the men should put this onto you. No. I want the men to take up the godly role that God has appointed them to be in the life of the church, in the life of the family, in the life of society. You men might say, why is he picking on me? All right. Oh, is this table? Okay. You look around here today, and I can tell you one, two, three. And then nobody in the next row, one in the next row, one in the next row, none, one in the next row. And you can count, there's probably about 20 of us, male men, here. Look around, how many sisters? Yeah. Something wrong with the equation, huh? 
Right or wrong, men, come on, speak up. Don't be shy. I'm an easygoing Kiwi. Huh? All right? You see, my brothers and sisters, the Lord God that created us, He created man out of the dust of the earth. In the image of God, the Bible says He was created, and then in the very being of man, God breathed in His life. And man became a living being. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's pretty weak. It's amen. 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 Glory of the Lord. And what has happened, I believe, over the years, we have diminished the Lordship of the Lord God Almighty. And we have irreverent the, the name of the Lord. Why? Because we have forgotten the mandate God gave in His Word. We fail to read the Word. In fact, sometimes it's only one in seven days that a lot of men will open the Word of God. Do you identify with that mean? Mm -hmm. We're good at huffing and puffing and blowing away the dust on the seventh day. So when we come to church, the Bible looks nice and clean. And so I want to share with you tonight, because I believe the Christ that I serve is in the restoration business. Amen. Amen? Yes. He makes all things new, broken things whole. When people have lost their hope, he comes along and he lifts them up and he says, you can do it. And if you're in that category today, I tell you, you're in for something beautiful. I bring my wife's uh, greetings to you. While I'm here, she's faithfully working in the fields. And I have a faithful wife. We've been now married for 52 years. Anybody near 50? Years of married life? Getting close. I've got 52 on you. Alright? So I think about it. That the faithfulness of a good woman is always behind you. Not walking behind me, but standing 100% with me. And from the time I became a Christian in 1960, 76, I gave my heart to the Lord. And it took my wife one year to follow after Jesus. For one year she carried on doing our Indian things. You know what a number of you know what Indian things are. We're good at storing. And I'm not lowering anything or putting Indian people down. Because to the degree of knowledge we had, we followed those things. We inherited from the parents. Parents said do this, so we did that until the revelation from the great daddy in heaven came down Ooh, and it changed my life. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe today that as you, as I share these things with you, uh, I believe your lives will be touched and there will be restoration in particular some of the younger people. Now I forgot to ask my dear sister, where have you gone? What time is it going to be that I'm going to finish here? Yeah, 8 o'clock. Five minutes time, or five minutes after midnight? <laughs> what do you like, long-winded preachers or short-winded preachers? Here's your option. I'll give you what the Lord gives, eh? Okay. Before I start, there's a young less standing here. Microphone. Where are you? The taller one. There was one lovely lass in the brown, but this one was in a grey. A little bit taller than the other one. The other one, that's right, sister. Okay, this is what the Lord's showing me. And maiden of the Lord, as you hold this phone, microphone, in your hands to sing unto me, declares the Lord, the anointing will flow not when you hold this microphone, the anointing will flow when you're on your knees in your home saying, Lord, I'm going to stand for you and I'm going to sing the words that are sung tonight with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and all of my spirit. And when you sing that, something of God is going to break forth. I, I think that you are still at school, you're still studying. 
Right, okay, you're going to find this year is basically to come to an end today for all the students in Fiji, is that right? Okay, next year is your stepping up and stepping over next year. And you're going to find you're going to have acceleration in your studies to go from what level you are by a dramatic jump. And that dramatic jump is going to lead you into higher places in the years to come, even into the situations of higher education, but it's not going to end there. You will sing for the glory of the Lord and you will cause young people to see why is this young lady singing with so much passion and they'll come and ask you the reason and then you'll share the gospel to them and you will see what the Lord can do with a willing servant of the Almighty God. Alright, if you've got your Bibles tonight, turn with me into the Old Testament and we're going to look into the life of Gideon. Gideon, this man from the children of Israel. Gideon was in Judges chapter 6. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter because we certainly will be here till midnight. But I'm going to highlight some points that are going to be keys for your breakthrough in life. Amen? Alright, let us pray, shall we? Father, as we all open our Word, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures that you have caused to be written years and centuries ago for our benefit here tonight. We acknowledge, Lord, that we are hungry for your Word. We are awaiting the Holy Spirit to quicken unto us understanding and insight of how you work from heaven above with the people that you know by name here upon this earth. Lord, you never fail, but we fail. Lord, you are holy, but at times we become unholy. We forget who we are. And Lord, we walk in our ways away from you. But we thank you. Jesus says, Lo, I am with you even to the ends of the earth. And this evening I pray that if any brother or any sister is struggling in their walk with you, Almighty Father in heaven, you would come forth and you would touch and minister into their lives that they would know the full restoration, the power and the glory in their lives through your enabling grace. And I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, here we see we have said in verse 1, it says, and again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. My brothers and sisters, we that are in Christ Jesus need to recognize, number one tonight, the one we love and the one that's given us salvation, his eyes are always upon each one of us. We are not an accident. We are a divine happening created in the image of God to reflect His glory and see that others come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? And I believe as Gideon here and the children of Israel, what did they do? They did evil. They forgot the word of the Lord and they started going down their own ways and the Lord let them go for seven years. Seven it represents a time of testing, a time of trial to see whether you come through after the seven years. My brothers and sisters, when we are disobedient to the things of God, we lose out on God's blessing, we lose out on God's presence, and we lose out on God's promises. Amen. Such a vital ingredient in our life that we need. <coughs> so the story goes on. When God gave them up, the power of the enemy started coming upon and against the children of Israel. When we walk out of the things of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because we are not humble enough, we are not yielded and willing enough to say, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way in my life. Thou art the potter and I am the clay. 
more than make me have your way in the walking out of the will of God. For me as a Gujarati to come into the Christian fold was a challenge because in our community when I gave my heart to the Lord, <coughs> the people said, he's gone to a white man's religion. He's lost his mind. And his wife has lost her mind as well. And we found that people didn't want to talk with us. It was a closed community. Nevertheless, we proceeded on with Jesus Christ. We knew that the way, the, great, the gate was narrow and the pathway was straight. And if we kept walking with Jesus, the things that would fall off at the narrow gate would be the things of the world. And I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you're dabbling in the world, you know what the world is? You know the latest electronic telephone, the latest electronic LED TV, and everything else, the list goes on. And you know right now it's Christmas time. Advertising comes on the channels like it's never been before. Don't get caught. Don't live beyond your means. Live within your means under the grace of Almighty God. And God had provided, yet the children of Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And the power of the enemy was so oppressive, the Bible says, <coughs> that the children of Israel had to hide in the caves, in the rock cliffs, with their little bit of possession, and try and save it from the enemy who kept on coming. The Bible says the enemy kept on coming like a swarm of locusts. A swarm of locusts. My brothers and my sisters, the enemy works overtime. Hallelujah. Mm. But our Lord is the victor over the enemy. You sang a beautiful song. Huh? He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Who's under your feet? <laughs> Satan. We sing it in church. Oh, praise the Lord. Why? Because there's a lot of us. How many of us are singing it when you get home? Uh huh. Well, thank you. See, we forget. A lot of times we say, oh, well, I want to hear the word of God. And I can tell you, if I went for one hour, you forget the first five minutes that I preached. And you leave that door, you might have a couple of snacks or whatever. By the time you get home, if you retain 10% of the message, you'll be doing very well. Stats tell us this. So we've got to be good hearers and good retainers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We've got Double ears, one mouth. The trouble is, we use the mouth more than we use the ears. And this is what was the problem with the children of Israel. Okay? Let's go a bit, a bit further. Verse 4. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither their sheep nor their cattle, nor their donkeys. Didn't leave anything alive. You see, the enemy is working to destroy everything. In particular, for the children of God. Tell you a little story. When I got married way back in 1966, as a young fellow, I was only 19. The instructions came from my daddy. I'd left school just two years before. Son, at the end of this year, you're going to go to India to get married. I'd never spoken to a lady that was of my age, outside of my family at that time. So I landed in India, and I'd been there when I was five, and now I was 19. And I got there, and I see people wearing saris back to front. Everybody looked dark and black. And everybody seemed like they're staring at you. And I was just absolutely petrified. I didn't know, you, you had dung floors with mud and cow dung on the floor where you had lino in New Zealand, you had dung floor there. Life took a dramatic turn. And then my, uh, I had to tell my brother-in-law, I've got to find a bride. And you know what it was like? Going to the local New World supermarket <laughs> and trying to find the right type of butter. <laughs> True. 
I was petrified. Why? I didn't know how to talk to this lady or what to ask her. If I did see her, I don't know whether she's going to be the right one or not. Hmm? I don't know whether some of you experience, but it's, it's a horrific place. Anyway, he organized one day this young lady and said, you come to my farm and see this lady. So I had a bicycle. So I bicycled about four miles into his farm and there was this young girl sitting there and there was nobody left in the house. They had all gone to the fields. And I walked in there, I just looked at her and I said, will you able to look after my mother? Because my mother had a stroke. That's all I asked her. She nodded her head. That was enough. I left the house, got on my bicycle and went home. <laughs> this is how I was petrified. All right? But it was hard. And I experienced India for six months at that time. I finally got married. But I found that while my wife's passport was going, they had all of these activities and everything going. And it was so dirty in, in, in my village at that time. It was so dirty. I mean, people got up in the morning and, you know, they did their business on the side of the road. <laughs> and it was just horrible. And the smell and litter and everybody would just throw the paper down there. And I struggled for six months. When I got to New Zealand, I said, ooh. <laughs> and I determined I'd never go back to India again. <laughs> So I sent my wife on her own, go and see your mummy and daddy. And then we had two children about seven years later. Send her back, go and see your mummy and daddy. Take them, see their granddad. And then finally, one day, Jesus came knocking on my door. And uh, my children had gone, they'd gone to Sunday school. And we used to send them away because my wife and I could go into the fields and cut our vegetables on a Sunday. In New Zealand, you have to have fresh vegetables to market on a Monday. So we send, us, we, thought, we send the children to Sunday school and we can go in the fields and work. You know what they did? They picked them up and out we'd go. They go to Sunday school, we go to the fields. By midday we come back into the house, they're back in there soon after. And then Christmas time come. Oh daddy, you got to come. Where? We've got a Sunday school program. Oh, uh, I was not too interested. But anyhow, I got there reluctantly, and there's the children, like these young ones singing with the joy of the Lord. They had a great time. It was Christmas function. Then they gave them lollipops and ice cream and jelly, and they were enjoying themselves. And I thought, wow, that is good. Then this one man that had been, when I was a kid, coming around to do Sunday school, and like I said, I had no time for him. He come around and he says in Gujarati, bye, and he's a European, bye. You know what bye means, brother? How are you? Things were terrible, but I said, oh, very good. <laughs> we're very good at covering things up, all right? And he said, very good. And then he said, bye. I'd like to come and tell you about Jesus. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but I'm Indian, so I'll let him come. I can guarantee you, if I come to anybody today, tonight, and I said, I want to come to your house, nobody will turn the door and say, you can't come. Indians have that within them. And I think that Fijian people and the Indian people here are just like the same. In fact, sometimes your generosity exceeds all boundaries. <laughs> and I go to visit people, I go to visit a person, and then they got a, a uh, what do you call this, a mat? Yeah. We call it a sadri in Gujarati. It's down there, and the plates are down there, the bowls are down there, pots of food are down there. And I said, oh, well, I come to see the sister. No, 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 no. You've got to see the food before you can see the sister. So you sit down and you eat. And this is tight as tight can be. And the hospitality of Fiji is exceedingly great. I must tell you, I can't handle it. <laughs> so this brother comes along home. Now why tell you the reason why? When I'd gone to India and got married, my mother had suffered a stroke down the right side of her body in 1963. At that time, nobody knew what a stroke was. She lied in a coma at home for two weeks before we got her into the hospital. And she was a fairly biggish lady around about, pardon me, sister, about your size, okay? So it took one son at the back and the other son here to pick her up and take her to the bathroom and leave her there for the sister to do whatever they're going to do. And when they finished, they'd call out and we'd then pick her up and take her to the bed. She had suffered this stroke. And so she came with me when I was going to India and I got married there. 
And I thought, now if I go to this Pujari, this temple, maybe my mother gets better. So I'm walking up these with my young bride, and the Pujari would come down these steps halfway. He said, how much do you want to offer? So you get your wallet out, give him some money. I think we've done those sun. You know what that sun is? We've done what we could to please God, and might thank God. I don't know what he looked like. But I've given him something, and maybe he'll give me back what I needed. Then we get down and say, okay, which one do to do next? We'll go to that one, get out the time code. Oh, you can make that train. Then the next one, and then the next one. Finally, <coughs> finally, I came to New Zealand. Just before I came to New Zealand, one man said, do 40 Thursdays of fasting. Total fast. 41st, you do this punya, and your mom will be sweet speaking but every month you must send me this much money <laughs> so indian i am i want to see my mother so every four weeks i'd send the money and i tell you my brother says when you haven't eaten and you're lifting potato bags that are 20 kilos in weight all day and lifting 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 by night time got a headache and i feel all wheezy but i for my mum you see so I was all excited on the 40th. I did it on the 41st. I got everything together, did the punja. I tell you, I was excited, man. And at the end of it, I looked at my mummy. And my mummy was still the same. I got him. And I said, no. This man has taken me for a ride. So now when this Christian brother comes along into my home, and he says, brother, God loves you. And I said, yeah? What's he going to charge? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you misunderstand, he says. You know what, my brothers? I was ready with this. <laughs> Any man that was going to tell me a lie was going to get it because I was a hockey. Huh? I was a hockey. I played hockey, made the New Zealand Indians in hockey. But if you hit me faster, I guarantee you I'll balance the books. <laughs> and even if I have to have an early shower. That was my condition. So anyhow, this brother said, no, you got me wrong. So he shared John 3.16. And I thought, there's something about this. There's something about it. The word of God got a hold of me. Right? So away we went. Now to cut another story short, a bit like Gideon. Now, a few years go along a bit later, and the Lord, I'm in my prayer. And the Lord comes and he said, Naren, you're going to go to India with the Bible. Huh? What did you say? You're going to go to India with your Bible. Now listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. The place I hated, the place I rejected, was the very place God prepared to send me back for. Amen? And he sent me back into that place. 82, he spoke to me. Four years later, I had mortgages up to here, developing the business. I brought tractors, built a house, built warehouses, the stock all the things in. I had tractors galore, trucks, cars, you name it, I had it. Plus a mortgage. So when the Lord calls, I said to my wife, Lord's calling me to India. She said, yeah? I said, yeah. Where are you going to get the money from? What we got comes in here and it goes to pay the refinance company. So I said, simple prayer. And anybody that's sitting here, God loves a simple prayer. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Do you know that word kiss? Young people probably know it, some of the older ones. Do you know the word kiss? Right? You know, they, they, and I'm not going to describe it. But the word kiss is spelled K-I-S-S. -S, all right? For us Christians to reach our neighborhood, use the kiss method. That is K for keep, I for it, S for simple, and the S final one, stupid. Do you get it? <coughs> keep it simple, stupid. The gospel is very simple. Very simple. So you go into the world and preach the gospel. And this sister that got up here just before my coming, you've done an excellent job. I forgot where you've gone. 
That's it. You're doing an excellent job. So you see, my brothers and sisters, as he did this, something began to happen. Now, I remember God was in the process of working in my life. Gideon had forgotten God's way with the children of Israel. So now, it comes down, we'll go down, that has been wrong. And so, verse 6, Midian so impoverished the people of Israel. That means anything they had of substance was always under threat of disappearing by the enemy. In our life today, whatever you possess, unless you pray over it in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb, the enemy is all out to rob, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And therefore we guard our families, we guard our properties, we guard everything we have under the grace of Almighty God and say, Lord, what you have given me, I place my hands and I claim the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus over all that I have and it's for your glory. Amen. And when you do that, something begins to happen. Something in the heavenly realm begins to happen. And you find that you've got a divine unction of the Holy Spirit working in you. Alright? Now, one, two, three, four. That lady there. You've got a pen in your right hand and you've got your Bible in your left. Yes? You. Alright? Is your dear husband here? Alright. Good one. Okay, this is what the Lord's showing you. As you stand as a woman and a man of faith with a basket to gather even for your weekly provisions, as it were, the Lord would say, have an expectation to gather for my kingdom. For as you begin to say and lift your eyes up towards heaven and say, here we are, Lord. We stand here as your servants. Equip us through the Holy Spirit with wisdom and insight. And as you avail yourself unto the Lord, you shall begin to see that God leads you to the right. He leads you to the left. And it will be that even as you knock on that door, you might not know what you're going to say, but the moment you knock on that door, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be there to meet the need of that family that you're going to talk to about. Mm. I see it so clearly that if you walk by faith, you'll see it happen. But the moment you go out of these doors and you say, husband, what do you think? And he says, well, I don't know. Well, then I tell you, your basket will be inverted and it will remain inverted. Praise the Lord. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, those things I declare, I don't know you, but the Lord knows you. There's this young man over here on the other side. Now, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Is that, uh, is that your family member on beside you? You're just bowing down, fixing your shoe. Yeah. Is that your family there beside you, or are you on your own? No. You're alone. Okay. You know Jesus. Okay, this is what he's showing me. Son, learn to open my word. Son, know what it is to present yourself before my holy throne as a holy and living sacrifice without blemish, without blemish without blemish, and you shall begin to see my anointing flowing upon you, my anointing flowing through you, <laughs> and the oracles you will speak will be of the Lord your God, because you have learned what it is to stand in His holy presence and present your body as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. So here we go, and then and so we, we'll jump a few verses. And, uh, and then the Lord comes along, and he, uh, the angel of the Lord speaks to uh, Gideon. He says, this is what he says. I brought you out of Egypt, number one. We've all been brought out of captivity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Once we're bound in the Satan's work, we've been brought out of captivity. That's our Egypt. Next, he says... I brought you out of the land of slavery. We were slaves to the enemy's work. Amen? Is that right? Amen. But he's brought us up. Then he says, I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of the oppressors. Hallelujah. 
we've been snatched out of the pit of the hell and burning hell into the land of glory, into the kingdom of lights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and when you know that revelation, the transformation that comes with it will be second to none. Then he says, I drove them from before you and gave you their land. Wherever any man or woman of God will go, God goes before them <coughs> clearing the way. He goes clearing the way. And any of you that might be even in, uh, struggling in school, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, and I could give you many testimonies, but time will not allow. I've seen students come that have failed exams, have lost hopelessness because they haven't got the finances in the home. The young lad, uh, Les in Lombasa, had no money. Uh, her parents had no money. She had low marks at school. And she stood before me one night and she said, I said, why are you so sad? And she said, because I want to go to the University of South Pacific, USP, they call it. And uh, I said, well, what is the problem? And she said, well, two pastors. She said, one, I haven't got the marks. I've only got 234. I need an exceed of 280 something. And secondly, I need $2,000. And I said, what does daddy do? And daddy pipes up and he said, if I get a job, I can cut two tons of sugar cane a day. I said, what do you get and pay? $20. Well, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see at $20 and this young lass needs $2,000 to go to the university. She's not going to make it. I said, what's your theory? Do you believe in Jesus? She looked up at me and I'll never forget the eyes, that young lass's eyes, till the day I die on this earth. And she looked up at me and I said, come on, stand up. We'll believe Jesus and we'll pray for you. Prayed with this young lass, stood up. It was November, she was going to sit another exam, it was in October when I prayed for her. I went back to New Zealand and I'm talking 1993. This happened. 94, I'm in India in the mission fields. In the month of April, I get a letter there, gone to New Zealand, and my son sent it through. And it said, Dear Pastor, do you remember me? I am Usha Devi from the Massa. I hope you remember me. But the prayer you offered in that house that day, when I sat my final exam, my marks went from 234 to 35 to over, well over 285. And because of the excess of marks and the jumps of the high marks, the school board sat down and they said, this lass is worthy to go into the University of the South Pacific, no charge on bursary. Hallelujah. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that tonight? Do you sisters belong to any leader in this church here? You do? You do? Is he here? What about you? Alright. The Lord has shown me that it's time to stand and pray. For the prayer of the righteous servants of Almighty God turn a nation, the word says. I believe you are too to be catalyst in your assembly for praying through because there's a spiritual war that's roaming over your assembly and over some of your congregational members. And I believe the Lord is going to reveal by the power of the Holy Spirit the exact name of the spiritual forces and because you know what it is to be unified just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were unified, that unity, you will be uh, get the revelation of what the name of that spiritual things are, and you'll cut it, and you'll break it, and you'll see the captives being set free. And they're going to come into the church, and they're going to celebrate. But you're going to have the work to do to stand and be unified and break through. The revelation's coming. The revelation's coming. All right, let's go a bit further. <laughs> I'm like spot. Now, and he said, so the Lord brings out what he, the Lord had done for the children of Israel. <laughs> and we need to realize tonight what the Lord has done for us. Hallelujah. Now, as he comes along a bit further, <clears throat> the angel of the Lord now comes and he meets with Gideon. 
Now, where is Gideon? Gideon is in a wine press. If you gather grapes in a wine press, you put them in a narrow area, and you put them down, and you crush them with your feet. Now, Gideon's in that wine press, but if you were to go to India and you see them how they thresh wheat and how they thresh rice, they have a, a big steel bed, probably back from here to a speaker long, and the rice are in bundles like this, and they get it and they whack it. And all the grain goes through the bars of the steel and onto the floor. And there's quite a noise. Because you've got to make sure you get every grain out of that stalk if you want the full harvest. But here's Gideon, he's in a wine press where you tread things down and he's going like this. Looking to see if any of the enemies coming. If you're in a place of fear tonight, Jesus is the answer for you. Because the angel of the Lord comes along and look what he says in verse 12. <clears throat> when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said... The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Hmm? Here's this man, scared, probably knees knocking, threshing the wheat. And the Lord comes along and says, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. What does that make you do? <laughs> huh? Mighty warrior? Are you the head or the tail? Amen. Amen. Are you the head or the tail? Yeah. Pastor, senior pastors, you have some men in the church? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Where are the mighty men that believe in the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, men, I pray for you. <laughs> Man, now one of the reasons and I tell you with sincerity I'm not putting you down one of the reasons why we're not seeing the miracle powers of the living God is because we're cold in our faith and we can't even say an amen or a hallelujah when the truth of God's word is being spoken When I sat in churches as a young Christian, I haven't received school certificate. I flopped out. I didn't even get 30 in English. I flopped out. But one thing, when I came under the Word of God, I said, Lord, that's your Word, and I'll do my uttermost to learn as much as I can learn and apply it in my life. When you are determined for the things of God, nobody will hold you back. Hallelujah. But if you're not determined for the Lord, the devil will come along and say, Hey, mate, I'll willingly put my reins around you, and I'll keep you in no man's land. You'll be a doubter. You won't be a victor. I'll keep you under sowing. You won't be a conqueror, and I'll keep you under my little foot. But Jesus says, the devil is under my foot, and the men of God need the devil to be under their feet. Amen. So as he speaks, and, and, and then 13, but Gideon says, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why has this all happened to us? <laughs> huh? Now if you were to look back into Deuteronomy, and I'm not going to do it to go back there tonight, you'll see in around about chapter 32, verse 46 to 47, God had said, now you teach this to your children, you first know it, you teach it to your children, and then you teach it to your children's children. He gave specific commands. But you know, we, we people are so educated, we're so clever, we don't even pick it up ourselves, so how are we going to feed our children and their children? This was the condition of the Israelites. My brothers and sisters, we ought not to make the same mistake. These things are put down as a reminder for us that if our God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here's the children of Israel in Gideon speaking these things. And he says, where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Now I want you to think about this as you prepare to give you go yourself home tonight. When the children are in bondage and they had nothing and they had to make bricks out of straw and dirt, and that's all they had. God said, when you leave the people of Egypt, you'll go out with the wealth of Egypt. Hallelujah. 
And until God did the miracle after miracle after miracle, and in God's timing came along, the children left with the wealth of Egypt. Is that right? Yes. 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 Right, they left with the wealth. Yes. And then he brought them to the Red Sea. The Red Sea in front, the army of Egypt in the back. What did God do? Put lemon juice on the water? No, he didn't. He said, Moses, where's your rod? Where's that authority of God in your life, Moses? And that's what God is asking you tonight. Where is the authority of God in your life tonight, my brothers and sisters? Moses, Let us be the church of the living God. And not only be the church here, but be the church in this community. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, but I'm very passionate that we haven't got the time that we think we've got before Jesus comes back again. He's right now is a day of grace. Salvation is a free gift. But when Jesus comes, judgment is going to come. And you know where it's going to start? Judgment will start in the house of God. Yeah, come on. It starts here. Then what will we say to our Savior? Oh Lord, I was so busy. I was so busy. Threshing the wheat in the wine press. My brothers and sisters, he makes another bold ill-fated example <clears throat> he said did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt but now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midianites yes God had put them into the hands of the Midianites but God does not abandon you hallelujah Amen. 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 no matter how many faults you make you can come along and bow the knee and say have a father I've fallen short of the mark of the high calling of thine. I repent from my sins in Jesus' name. Forgive me, Lord, for I no longer desire to be there, but I long to be your son or your daughter of the living God. And that's going to take courage. That's going to take boldness on your part. You have to surrender yourself and say, Lord, all that I am is by your grace and your grace alone. And so he turns this, and the Lord said to Gideon in verse 14, and I like this, he said, he turned to him and said, go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have. That means I've told you that you are a mighty warrior of the Lord. That's the strength. And if you're weak, that's your strength. That's your promise. That's where we go in. Hallelujah. And I tell you, my God is no man's debtor. He's no man's debtor. Amen. You might say, oh, well, you're very passionate because maybe you've got all these tractors and you're well successful. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I'll be absolutely honest with you. I left my brother, uh, my family business in 1976. And I thought, I'd go and start a new business of farming with my wife on our own. I'll be the fine. I went to the bank manager and I said, I want $30,000 to develop my farming business. He said, we cannot give you 30,000. I said, why not? He said, you've got no track record. <coughs> I said, I was with that company. He said, you were with that company. You haven't got any track record. We'll give you five. I want 30. You know what I did? I went to a private company. At that time, the interest rate was 13%. All right? I went to a private company with my wife. We signed the papers. The private company said 19% for $30,000. 96% on top. Right? But I said, Lord, you're with me. I'm doing this as an act of faith. We started and, uh, and we're living on $20 a week. Myself, my wife, my mother, and my two children. $20 a week. The rest was coming, God, every month. $20. The man of God came along and said, Bride. <laughs> He said, you've got to learn to tithe. I said, what's that? You've got to give a tenth to the Lord. He looked in my wallet, pulled it out from $20. I'm going to give $2 to the Lord. I'm a young man in faith. Nobody's telling me this. I pulled it out and he put a saucer there. And I tell you, that first day this hand shook like it never shook before. And I put that $2 note on that plate. Honestly, I'm not telling you to make this a picture up. I'm telling you it's the truth. God is my witness. And I put that down. Within six months, we started sponsoring two orphan children in India, still living on $18 a week. 
Two years later, three years later, not one day did we fall behind in our commitment of payment to the finance company. In three years, we cleaned out the $30,000 and my God was with me. We built a new house, we brought a new car, we brought a new tractor, we brought a new tractor, a new gear. And then in the midst of that, the Lord said, now go to India. <laughs> now go to Fiji. I've been coming to this nation since 1993. My brothers and sisters, I tell you, my Jesus is alive. Amen. You don't know him. I tell you, no other person that you need to know than the one that said to Gideon, you mighty warrior. Hallelujah. Now, let me begin to close this up. He said, go in your strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands and I not sending you. As I begin to bring this to a conclusion tonight, it is this. The Lord, I believe, is saying to many a young people tonight, we're going to start with this. He's saying, go and save young people in your community because the mighty hand of God is with you. To the older ones, Go into your neighbors, into the highways and your byways and save the community for Jesus Christ. All we've got to do, my brothers and sisters, is speak the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And leave the rest to Him. Then He goes and says, Am I not sending you? Hallelujah. Am I not sending you. Brother in the blue shirt, arms folded, yes, handsome looking young man, and I guess that's your bride next to you. Good. You're under the leadership of these pastors here. Yes? No. No. Okay. So wherever you come from, are you serving the Lord? The question. And I won't beat around the bush. I like to shoot straight. Alright? You know why? I believe for your wife and yourself, God has got a call on your life to go and share the gospel of good news. Amen. And not only to share it, but as you move forward, the gifting of the Holy Spirit's going to operate that one will get a revelation, the other one will get the confirmation. One will get the revelation, the other one will get the confirmation. And as you go in agreement, alright? Wherever God sends you, you'll always know that you're walking in the victory path of Jesus Christ. You'll always know it. Right? And as you continue to grow, you're going to catch the Holy Spirit speaking into your lives. Down at the back there, there's another brother behind the other one with another blue shirt. Yes, two rows from the, uh, row from the young lass I prayed for. Yes, that, that's the one. Tap him on the shoulder here. That's the one. Yeah, here's the one. You're a man that's sat under the word of the Lord for a number of years. Would that be right? Okay. Now it is time for activation. Activation. That means you don't sit. You move. And you move under the unction of the Holy Spirit of the living God. For the Lord is going to take you into places where you never thought you would go. In fact, uh -uh. but it's the day of the Lord upon your life. You're going to go in the might of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You got a wife? Somewhere here? No. Oh. Sing it, huh? Praise the Lord. So it's usual story. The wife does the walking, the husband does the sitting. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> I tell you why. Because in the midst of the hardest place, my state of Gujarat, if you would ever go and come with me to my state of Gujarat, where my house is, you could put a compass and within a half a, a, half a kilometer make a circle and you would come across a temple or something of the Indian faith. This is how many there are. 
in my heart as a young Christian, and there's not much support there, I said, Lord, when I go back into my village, I want to do something for you. And my wife and I went there in 1990. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's the only Christians in there, and they've got their festivals going, and they've got these things going 24 hours a day, these loudspeakers. It's hard to sleep. And, and down there, nobody knocks on the door. I mean, they just come. They're in the house. They just don't say, can we come in? So one day, me and wife are eating away there, and they're having this festival. And these children come running in. And they say, this is a posada. Sat, you know what that is? It's not the name of a family, it's the food offered. Now for me as a Christian, I used to take that before, but when revelation came, I will not take. Now I was faced with the situation, what do I do with this? I could say, yeah, take it and put it in the rubbish bin. I said, stop there. You are welcome to come into this house anytime you like, anytime. But please do not bring any of those things in here. Mm -hmm. Had to draw a line. Mm -hmm. For 12 years, every year I'd go there, it was a battle. One man come along, he said, you come to convert people to Christianity. You give them money, you give them a job, and they come to Jesus Christ. I said, no, 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 no. I do nothing of the sort. The same man it took 12 years. Without a word of light, he came to my doorstep and he said, Brother Naren, I want to tell you this. He said, 12 years ago, I said, did you come and convert people? He said, I see that you don't do this. You do it another way. You live the life of your Savior in this village. And my brothers and sisters, if I leave you with a closing word, it is that your lives will be read ahead of you speaking for Jesus Christ. Let me say it again. Your life will be read by the actions you live, by the love you shared out, rather than the words you speak, and you don't live the life. That's my Jesus. In the very place I was born, we now have a church. Right? Amen. I'll tell you one more, just before I finish. I came, went there, and uh, two, uh, these two couples got saved, had a crusade. They came to Jesus Christ as one Savior. The, the lady is the pastor now. Never been to Bible school. Never been to Bible school. She was a housewife. The anointing of the Lord came on her. She'd been going from 95 to now. And if you hear her preaching, never been to Bible college, you say, where has she got all this from? Anyhow, they couldn't, they couldn't buy land. So he had a poor little house. He said, Pastor, we'll knock this house down. I said, yeah. And then we'll put the church at the bottom. And we'll put another floor up and we can stay in there. I said, that sounds a good idea. So we got an engineer. And he said, we want to do this in this entire bit of land. And it was about uh, 100 feet long, uh, 15 feet wide. And so he come along the engineer, he brought a plan. And he said, right, this is what it's going to cost you. We can build it in 12 months. It'll cost you 55,000 New Zealand dollars. 55. And I said, okay, done. We signed the contract. I went to New Zealand and in my church, we had no dollar, not one dollar for this project. In fact, I don't even have my own building for a church in Auckland City. I hire the building, all right? So I did this PowerPoint presentation. I said, we're going to build a sister church in Nausari in Gujarat. Oh, yeah, everybody, not the head. You know how you do not the head? Yeah, all right, very good. Then going for a cup of tea, two men come up. Is it pastor? I said, yes. Hey, where's the money coming from? The question. I said, the Lord will provide. And as I stand here today, two months came, first installment, second installment, third installment. One day one man comes into my house, he said, Pastor Naren, there's a, you, a white man, and he said, I love what you do in India. He said, what are you doing now? I said, oh, we're building a church down there, sister church. He said, oh, yeah, I'll have a cup of coffee. Could you like to make a cup of coffee? So we have a cup. He said, wait there a minute. I said, I'll go to my youth. So he goes to the youth, gets a checkbook, comes in, sits down, $10,000. One man, check. 12 months from the day I landed in New Zealand, comes along, 12 months later to the day I'm going back to India to the mission field again. I give my sons, lot, I'm $5,000 short, finish this building project. My morning prayer, I said, Father, I came with a vision, you fulfilled the dream, but the dream is $5,000 short. Finish it, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. I'm sitting on here for aircraft prophet night time. Lunch then the mail comes in. Bills, bills, bills. At the bottom there's one on the pastor Naren. I hope then I open it. Inside there's a check for five thousand dollars. My God is great. Hallelujah. My God. Your God is great. And his name is Jesus. Amen. If there's any of you struggling poverty wise, you come stand in the front. The Lord's going to break the shackles as He broke the shackles of Gideon's life. Set you free. If maybe you're struggling in marriage, come stand and we'll pray with you along with my uh, fellow pastors here. And if, if, so I'll just move. If the Lord gives me a prophetic word, I'll move for you. Young people, don't leave it for tomorrow. This is your season because you're the church of tomorrow. Don't let it go by. Hallelujah. Let us pray. <coughs> Brother, can you come back on the keyboard and just play us something nice and quietly that worships and glorifies the Lord? Hallelujah. Father, we give you our praise. We come into your courts, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. And Lord, I thank you for this beautiful congregation that is gathered here today. And I know, Almighty Lord, as I surrender them into your hands along with their pastorship in this church, that, Lord, you're going to cause this fellowship to become a fellowship that shines the light of Jesus Christ. And where each one of these members of this fellowship will go, Lord, I believe the light will overcome the darkness and the darkness shall flee in Jesus' anointed name. Father, I pray your hand upon the pastors, the senior ministry, and their dear wives, upon their elders, and the developing leadership team. And above that, Lord, I pray your hand upon the music team, that the music team will always remain humble to worship the Lord, and they will be unified with one heart, one purpose, to bring glory to your name. I thank you for this open door of opportunity in this fellowship, Lord, because you are the Almighty. You have caused it to happen. And as I leave from this place, I impart your blessing upon one and all. In the glorious name of Jesus, Christ my Lord. Amen. And amen. Pastor. who need the prayer can come in front please as God leads you don't see that my neighbor is coming then I go if God leads you come with hallelujah open heart hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord
I see to other people see different. But Lord is your creation. He holds. And within him is your spirit, Lord, the very breath of life. Now, Lord, I pray today that the very breath of life, the Lord will say, my son, I declare I am the way. Of her eyes, 
and Lord, I impart the flow of the Holy Spirit to come and bring forth the new things, the new wine into the new wine store. Because Lord, and Jessica is willing to receive the new wine with the new garments of praise the Spirit of heaven. Lord, let it be one that knows the liberation of the Holy Spirit and moves in wonderful
still be grateful and secure I don't think we limit to the talk and the conversation. So today, let's respect the Lord and do not be fearful, but be bold. For David knew his God, and because David knew his God, God used him to destroy the Goliath that came against the children of Israel. And when you wait upon my word, begin to meditate upon my word, my word will keep you straight beyond what you ever dreamed would be possible my son. I look for those who will search for truth, and the truth will set them free. They will not only be freedom for themselves, but the desire will be from heaven. And you buy things and never pay for it. Into your life. See tonight the man of God has come all the way from New Zealand. Touching your life. To come. And there's a season. And minister the man of God to all of us here. When those things seem like. Tonight all of us we have. Definitely say that we've been blessed. Amen. He's going to come clarity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. First will come the clarity of the word. Hallelujah. Second will come the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We're taking up a special offering. And third to will come a pastor the vision of God uh, Almighty. Go and when to the ends of the world I've seen Jesus. and preach the gospel. I've seen Jesus. And you can be a part You'll of this ministry that is through the offering that you're giving tonight. For the glory so please, dig deep into your pockets and bless the man of God as he has blessed you. As he blessed you tonight with his message. In Jesus name. The God the has given to him to come and preach this church. God. It's upon his life. Bless him with a him free. great offering tonight. In life, All of you that have received ministry through people. prayers and Father, prophecy, Jesus come. Name. Bless the man of God as he has blessed you. Bring an offering. Preach Hallelujah. Stay. Bless the man of God. Let's really bless him tonight Preach as he comes to minister Preach to us stay. tonight. We've been blessed by his ministry. Preach so stay. let's minister back to him right. with a great offering tonight. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Come. Is your husband here today? No. Come and bless the man of God. Hallelujah. Bless him with a great offering tonight. Stand alone in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He doesn't come to church on Sunday. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. This offering remains 
not open until the last person is prayed for. It will remain open until the last person. We will pray for this offering until the last person has been prayed for. Amen. I don't know you, but I'm asking you how to Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll ask your brother Jason and sister Mary to continue hallelujah, with the worship song as the, our brothers and sisters are still being prayed for. Hallelujah. Just bless us with worship. Thank you, my brother. Hallelujah. This right here is the wonderful Jesus.
grace and the mercy of Almighty God on his life. And he would say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Jesus name. Why would you look to the right, look to the left, as if you don't have anything to bring unto the Lord? My son, this day you stand in my holy presence as one that has been created for a season and a time such as this. It is a time of preparation to put the old things behind me and enter to the new doors that I have before me, declares the Lord. The day of Yahooing, the day of being a young boy that gets up to mischief, are but over. As you stand in my presence this day, you're a man that has a call of Almighty God upon your life.
Ready for fam what I'm saying? Yes. Ready for right and fam. Father, I think it's made of this and the glory of your name. Your name. Your name. Your name.
thank you for the visitation of your presence. Thank you, Father, for the touch of God. Thank you for the transformation that is taking place in our lives. Thank you for restoring us to you. Thank you for reconciling us to you through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you tonight for all we have received from you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your servant whom you have sent from New Zealand. Lord God, to come and share the message with us tonight. We bless his life. We bless his family. We bless his ministry tonight, Father God. We pray, Lord God, as we bring this offering to you, Father God, to bless his ministry. We pray that you multiply. We pray, Father God, that you, hallelujah, multiply the anointing upon his life. Uh, open doors where there was no door, Father God. We pray, Lord God, hallelujah, that we are refreshing a renewal come upon his life, Father God, to carry the message of the cross, Lord God, to all the corners of the globe and to all nations and to all people and to all communities, Father God, that they may come to know Jesus Christ personally as their Lord and Savior. We thank you for this meeting tonight. Bless your people, Father God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Give a clap off to Jesus tonight. God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday.